I'm not entirely certain why I'm making this video. I mean, the last two, there was a specific point to it. This one, it's, uh, what time is it? It's like 12.20 in the morning, and I'm, um, I'm kind of tired, but not really sleepy yet. Not ready for bed. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of wanted to talk. wanted to say things. Um, I mean, I got a few things I could talk about. I had a couple ideas in mind, talking about ideas of guilt and dissociation. But those are kind of negative probably gonna end up talking about at least the latter at some point while I'm sitting here yammering um ah you know what this is actually a good time for me to say to point something out y y'all know how I make music right sometimes kind of sort of <laughs> not super often well um I made I made I spent like maybe 30 35 40 minutes uh not too long ago just kind of making a thing just just making a music because I can make a music, and I did exactly that. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to play it for you. It's not exceptionally long, but I've, I've got a reason for this, I swear. Just for now, just listen. I mean, this there's a high probability this isn't ever even going to be, like, uh, is this actually recording? I actually don't know if this is recording audio for... Um, Recording audio. Yeah, it's recording system sounds. Okay. It's unlikely this is ever going to become a full-fledged song because I cannot for the life of me figure out how to build on it, but I think it's cool. So sit back, listen for a few seconds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill the mic too, just for that duration. Sorry, I apparently didn't hit the mute mic button or something, even though I hit the mute microphone button on there. Um, but yeah, that's... That that kind of thing right there. You can see if you... Um, it should be recording my, my main screen. You probably saw the Windows Media Player that popped up and um, the file name there to the end. It's just like, as I was sitting down thinking I want to make a music, I came up with that that um, that background riff you heard, those, those particular chords, that little... Um, uh, four bar structure and it sounded to me distinctly like like you're playing uh, any old video game any any narrative or story driven one and you get to a point where your characters are like either devoting themselves to each other or trying to remind each other that in the midst of horrible terrible hardship time zenuses they've still got each other and they're going to keep pressing on that kind of thing that's why it's that's why I just arbitrarily named it to the end i mean if you want to see if you want to see <laughs> That's actually, like, the most structured file name I've had for a project in a long time. Anyway, I'm sharing that with you because it may never end up on this channel otherwise, so why not, right? And because I realized I need some incentive to actually make music. The last full song I made, Ark, was made because some friends asked me to make something based on uh, the current storyline in their tabletop campaign, right? The, song, the last song I had produced before that... Uh, that was Graviton, I think? That one was just entirely inspired by you guys watching me streaming, making music, and giving me some good ideas. It's like, I need some kind of... some kind of inspiration, some kind of direct incentive, so to speak, in my brain to make a song that isn't terrible. My motivating thought for that thing there that you just heard is exactly the scene that I pictured after coming up with those few bars, those four, four main chords, right? Well, like, one, two... It's like two and a half chords. <laughs> anyway, it's probably closer to three. Anyway, um... You guys should suggest ideas for me, like... 
give me a scenario or an environment or a feeling or something that I can build on. And if you give me anything like that, I want it to be detailed. I want you to tell me as much as you're as much as you can think of or come up with. And I will try and make music based on whatever ideas you present because apparently I need ideas to base my music on. <laughs> the idea of um the idea of a storyline in a campaign, the idea of a scene in like a like an RPG previous good songs I've made, the idea of winter as a construct, the idea of making a friend very, very happy, those kinds of things. I need that. So give me some ideas. And um, also, if I can figure out how the hell PayPal works, I might um, I might do something similar, but along the vein of uh, like commissions instead. I tried... I tried doing music commissions a few years ago, and no one had any interest anywhere on the internet, so I just kind of dropped the idea. But I think part of that is because I just wasn't really all that good back then. And I'm not really super, I'm not like that much better, but my music making skills have progressed and changed. So if anyone wants to give me money in exchange for making a song, I would not be, I would not be opposed. <laughs> not that that's going to happen anytime soon anyway. It's... It would be a far future thing unless I got particularly lucky that like somebody watched this video and was interested in what I had to make. Um, if you're one of those hypothetical people, hi, hello. I promise I'm more professional than I sound. I'm just kind of like getting over some sickness and busy dissociating nonstop. So my brain is in like eight places at once. So yeah, that's that's that stuff. Let's see. I got other things I could talk about. I mean, like, I I went... I had yesterday... I had a Saturday off for some bizarre reason yesterday, and I've got, like, two more over the next three weeks, which is baffling to me. I haven't had Saturdays off in many months, right? But I spent yesterday going with my roommate Carson to his weekly gathering of nerds that he calls Game Night. I haven't been there in a long time, like, not since May or maybe even April. And, um... I went with the express intention of, you know, st not being the, the, sh the shy, timid self I used to be. So when I was offered the chance to play with a brand new Commander format deck in Magic the Gathering, I sat down with some weird deck and I played Magic with them and had a grand old time. <laughs> we played two, two rounds of five-player Commander format and... Both games I would easily have won if I hadn't just decided to play the wild card and, you know, mess with everyone. I, de I, I, I deemed myself the agent of chaos because that is exactly what I did. And I could go into detail, but Magic the Gathering is not something I care that much about. I just happen to know how to play it and happen to be pretty good at it. Um, but my point is that during this game night, uh, one of the one of the guys decided to order pizza for literally everyone, so we spent about a hundred dollars on on pizza, right? Which sounds like a lot of money until you hear that he makes forty bucks an hour and works, you know, an average fifty five to sixty hour weeks. So a hundred bucks on pizza is no big deal to him. But um, so he did that, and I ordered like a small margarita pizza, which I thought would be good. It was okay. The pizza was okay. But then I'm pretty sure it gave me a mild case of food poisoning that night because I, like, um, maybe about two-thirds of the way through the first Commander format game we played, I started to feel immensely sick. Just, like, flu symptoms, fever, sweating, clammy, everything was terrible, and I just kind of powered through it, drank some water, uh, asked the host of... of of game night to if he had any ibuprofen or aspirin he went and grabbed a bottle of ibuprofen let me take a couple which was very nice of him because i had a raging headache for whatever reason i'm pretty sure it was the pizza that gave me food poisoning but it wore off by the time i left which is just an indicator of how immensely ridiculous my immune system is and i could go i could go on and on about how stupid my immune system can be but uh i woke up this morning um, cause I needed to go to work, right? And I woke up at 11.15, and as y'all know, my shifts are from 11.30 to 8. 
and I looked at my watch, and I put a hand on my forehead, and I found that I was still feverish, which is bizarre, because I felt fine when I went home last night. So I, th so I, I thought I just kind of like laid in bed for five minutes and stared at the wall and thought to myself, the last time I went to work feeling slightly sick because I just didn't have enough sick time to take the day off, I got half the people in my tool rental sick over the course of a week, and that week was hell, and it was 100% my fault. So um, I decided, all right, fine, I'll just call out. I don't have enough sick time to cover the shift today, but that's a shame. What you gonna do, right? Hi, Ospin. Um, sorry, just commenting on the, the shift and uh, desktop background there because I've got it set on a loop. But anyway, so I called out today, and uh, I was just kind of thinking about it, just like, mm, I don't really feel good about calling out because this department I work in is still fairly understaffed, and now that I'm full-time, I feel like they're expecting a lot more from me, which they literally are for my time, but also as an employee there. And when I call out and don't have enough sick time, that throws the department into chaos, because when anyone calls out, that just causes an immense... Well, actually, no, one of the technicians could easily call out, but... If one of one of us folks who actually runs the rental department calls out, uh, everything goes to shit, especially especially on a Saturday or Sunday, and I called out on a Sunday. It's not the first time I've done that. I feel very guilty about that, but I don't know. I'm just hoping if I go into work tomorrow, I'm not going to be judged super hard. Like, who's even going to be there tomorrow that wasn't there today? Or was there today? Bill, I guess? The only one? No, Michael will be there. I feel bad, but I also don't think I really need to feel bad, just because I know what's best for me. I don't know. Guilt is a really weird thing, especially this job. I I feel like I'm way too invested in a job that I really don't like. Because I like my coworkers, I like my bosses, I like everyone I work with, and most of the customers I deal with in any given day are also pretty cool. And the job itself feels fairly rewarding, but holy shit, it is so difficult. Not like, not like actually difficult to do, but it's just so painful. <laughs> what I really want, what I really want is a desk job where I don't have to interact with people beyond direct coworkers. That would be nice, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, so I'm not going to bank on it. But I don't know, I don't think I would feel guilty calling out at this job given that there's no one to replace me. It's like, I, I put myself in this situation in a lot of ways by agreeing to work in this tool rental department in the first place. Putting myself in a, su a super understaffed department means that if I'm missing, a huge portion of coverage that day is gone, and there's no one who can replace me. Like, it's, it's a great feeling that I'm functionally irreplaceable, with my current position, even though I'm still paid minimum wage and I'm, I'm lowly as far as the totem pole is concerned in this corporation, but at the same time, I hate the fact that I'm irreplaceable because then I feel terrible whenever I'm not there. I can't do anything about that, though. It's a pain. So you know what I did to cope with that? I, as soon as I got off the phone with the manager on duty to say I'm calling out, I fell back asleep until, like, 1.30... Uh, maybe maybe it was like two I don't know but I woke up at some weird time didn't even look at my watch which is unusual usually when I wake up I look at my watch immediately like that's just step one um, and then I just kind of like I'm just gonna get out my tablet and play a video game so I got out my tablet I played some Brave Frontier I got bored really quickly because I'm starting to get really disillusioned with that game because I've done like everything that's interesting and there's nothing left that really holds my attention um, so I'm just like, I'm gonna search the Google Play Store for a new game, and I got a new game, and it's called Buff Knight, I guess. It's like a, like a infinite scroller, really baseline, easy, like, RPG type thing. Wasted a few hours playing that, got out of bed, got on my computer, looked at the clock on the computer screen, it said it was about 5.30 or so, and I'm just like, well, fuck. I haven't eaten anything today, and it's 5.30 p.m. This is a mistake that I've made, so 
I just kind of sat around and watched some YouTube videos and ignored the hunger as best I could. I ate some Oreos because I've got a package of Oreos sitting on my desk for whatever reason. And then I decided, hmm, hmm, I want Denny's. So I found the nearest Denny's about 15 minutes north of here. Uh, I'm just like, okay, cool, it's 8 o'clock, I'm going to get in my car, I'm going to drive north. I ended up missing the exit by like a whole four miles, so that was an adventure trying to find the damn Denny's. Then I sit down in Denny's, I get my food, nothing special, I bought a quesadilla and some mozzarella sticks because I'm on original and because it's cheap. And while I was sitting there, um, a couple of interesting things happened. First off... There's a football game playing on the screen in the background, and I didn't see who was playing, but um, while I was just kind of eating, like, real slowly, the one guy in the entire establishment that was watching the game just all of a sudden started freaking out and clapping and jumping up and down with joy, and I'm just like, okay, something cool must have happened. I wonder what it was. I look up at the screen, and it's the Seahawks versus some team. I have no idea, but... I'm in Seattle, right? So the Seahawks are basically the native team here, which means I'm assuming something good happened for them. Turns out that they managed to intercept what would have been a game-winning touchdown, but only barely, which means they won the game, which is very impressive, I think, even though American football is pretty stupid. But I think, I personally, this is an opinion, I think it's a stupid sport, but that guy was just, like, stalking up and down the entire store chatting up every single patron including me about how that was such a great game and a great play and all sorts of good stuff and go Seahawks and I'm just thinking just sitting there nodding just looking looking at him just nodding and smiling just like hmm, cool good for you buddy then I noticed that this guy who this this guy uh had he headphones on and I'm just like why did I bother talking to you so that was interesting and then um and then let's see Shortly after that, a family of Hispanic folk walked into the store, got sat down at a table not too far from me, close enough that I could hear what they were saying if I were actually paying attention, and um, they ended up getting seated right next to a group of police officers that were just like, I think they were on their lunch break or something, I would guess? But there were four, you know, four white male police officers in, in the whole getup. They had their... They had their, their armor, their badges. I saw a couple guns. Cool stuff, right? That's what they do. And this family of uh, Hispanic folk had a couple kids, two, two little boys. One of them, I'd guess, was probably like 11 years old. The other one, probably eight or so. The, the eldest of the two decided to start talking to the police officers. And um, one in particular was the only one who really responded to the kid. But then all of them started to like pay closer attention to the conversation because it very rapidly turned into this relatively young Mexican child, or not necessarily Mexican, but you know, of Hispanic or Latin American descent. I'm not really sure how to say L-A-T-I-N-X out loud. That doesn't make, I can't vocalize that. But anyway, very quickly turned into this little kid of that, of that uh, race, talking with this white male police officer who had a gun on his hip about why police officers shouldn't have guns. <laughs> and, um, like this is just this is just a setup for a terrible terrible scenario but this this officer and his colleagues were so patient with this child and were being so civil and this kid had all these great reasons for why police shouldn't have guns right like what's what's the point of having the ability to shoot to kill when you should be trained to defend yourself without the use of murdering whoever's attacking you right and, you know, the police officer reminded the kid, sometimes we have we have people who have guns and we have to do something about that. And the kid's like, okay, cool. So I ended up leaving the store, leaving the Denny's, uh, paying my bill, leaving a 30% tip because that's what I do. Don't look into that too much. I've got my reasons. Where these two, f these two people were having the most civil and actually very interesting discussion about a really sensitive topic... And there was nothing wrong going on. Like, the officer's colleagues were just kind of looking and nodding along, and sometimes one of them interjected with a thought. Um, the kid's brother just kind of, like, sat next to him and was watching very, watching the officers in particular very closely. Definitely, definitely absorbing a lot of, a lot of the interaction. And the kid's parents were, like, just kind of sitting at their table chatting. 
<laughs> just talking. Talking, but of course keeping an eye on their kids, because why not, right? Is moments like that that remind me that all the horrible shit that's going on right now in this country isn't, like, it's not everywhere. I mean, I'm fairly privileged in the fact that I live in Seattle, which is a liberal safe haven. And actually is apparently a safe haven for undocumented people as well. Like, the city of Se like the mayor of Seattle and I think it's, I want to say it's actually New York City, both declared that their cities would be havens for undocumented folks in the event that the Trump administration actually tries to deport them all. Which I think is wonderful. But, um... Great stuff like that still exists. It's it's not to say that seeing these 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 few great things going on right now uh, like lessens the impact of all the terrible shit that's going to happen and has already happened and is currently literally currently happening with all the protests and the Trump supporters doing Trump supporter things. <laughs> but like I don't know. Sometimes I get a little bit of a reprieve from my own. You know, negative thoughts about the way the world is now and I get that reprieve not from myself but from other people that do the right thing or do things in a good way if that makes sense and then I go to work and you know a bunch of my coworkers are just like yeah I'm glad Hillary lost and uh, global warming isn't real can you believe that I've actually had to try and convince one of my coworkers who's younger than me that global warming is real Oh my god, that kid. I'm gonna call him a kid because he's younger than me. He's over a year younger than me. He's a kid in my eyes. Don't... I, he is a kid and anyone who's at least a minute older than me is an ancient relic anyway. What I'm really doing right now is just talking to fill space and to fill time. I mean... These videos, these... They're sort of vlogs. They're not really vlog vlogs because there's not really a video going on, but... I guess by definition, because they're on YouTube, they are vlogs. They're just meant to be something for you guys to to listen to and to think about, right? I hope that's what I hope that's what they're doing. Not necessarily something to get you to think, but something to something that you can focus on. I don't know. I mean, for the same reason that I'll like find the last three or four Isaac episodes from Northern Lion that I didn't watch and put them in a playlist, stick them on my tablet, put it next to my ear and lie down in bed and go to sleep with that in the background, that kind of thing. Filling space with someone else's voice and someone else's thoughts and something else that's going on, I've found is a really great way to quell the darkness in my head. And I know that sounds like really emo, but that's, that's, oh my god, oops, ah, I hit the enter key, I hit the enter key, actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if this was actually loud enough to hear when I played it earlier, <laughs> that'd be a great background song to put on, but, um, yeah, the way my brain has worked for many, many years is that whenever I lie down in bed, I don't really have this issue as much these days, but when I was younger, especially, like, right after my great-grandmother died, um, someone who I was immensely close to because we shared the same birthday and happened to have like the exact same personality, except that she was a 90 year, 90 something year old racist old lady. But I didn't know what racism was when I was that little because I was a white boy and we didn't have to deal with that. But I did have to deal with a fair amount of uh, prejudice on my own for entirely different reasons. But when she died, I wasn't really super torn up about it until. Until I started to realize at the ripe old age of eight years old that mortality is a thing and you will die eventually. Because, you know, at the time, technological and medical advances weren't really to the point where it's theoretically possible to live forever by the time it would be relevant for me and the folks my age, right? So every night I would lie in bed and the darkness around me would just, like, consume my mind and... All I could think about was like an infinite void where I'm still conscious, but I'm all that there is. I was eight years old. That's not something an eight-year-old should ever have to consider. And I cannot count how many times I would like, I would be lying in bed for one hour, two hours, three hours, just trying to keep these thoughts away so I could fucking sleep. And I'd end up running to my parents waking them up 
because I needed some comfort that life wasn't meaningless. <laughs> so the idea of of filling your own thoughts with something else that's going on, you know, you know how I started to do that? I uh my parents gave me a Game Boy Advance SP for let me see which birthday was that? That was my no, no, sorry, it was Christmas when I was 11 years old. They gave me a Game Boy Advance SP. And that system, that gaming system, as much as it kept me awake all night several times from buying a new Pokemon game and playing it until I had beaten it and not stopping at all until it was over, that thing let me sleep. That thing gave me the ability to distract myself so much that I could actually start to drift off and by the time any of those horrible thoughts in my head started to come into be come into existence again i was out i did that with my game boy advance sp my ds Lite, my 3ds i did that for my with my computer for a whole semester in college uh, as soon as i got a tablet i did that with the tablet i still do that with my tablet these days, um, it's not as bad because coming to terms with the fact that you're going to die eventually is not something I think, not a place I'm at yet, but I accept it and I understand it now more than I did when I was, when I was a kid, right? So if, if I can provide that kind of out for any of you, especially in these particularly dark times, I'm glad I can do that. I mean, if that's what it's doing. If not, then... You just sitting there listening to me because you want to, I guess, and I appreciate that. Believe me, I do. Uh, but I, I can't imagine anyone who would actually just sit down and listen to a solo pod, like a single person podcast, for twenty seven minutes now, unless they like the person there. I don't know. I wouldn't do that personally. I like to have something accompanying the voice that I put in the background, something that something that matters to me. Like for a lot for the longest time, it was literally just Northern Lion playing The Binding of Isaac because I love The Binding of Isaac as a video game. I still do, by the way. Um, and Northern Lion's voice is great. I actually just really I just really like his voice. It's really nice. What I'm doing now is just talking. It's not associated with any with anything in particular, but that does let me think a little better and process the, the thought streams I come up with. What I'm really not looking forward to is getting up tomorrow and going back to work. And it's not because I don't want to go to work, and it's not because I don't want to face the people that I let down by calling out today, or I guess technically yesterday by those specific calendar standards. Anyway, um... I just don't want to go to work because if today is any indication and if the last three weeks have been any indication, I'm going to be dissociating nonstop and that's not pleasant. When you go to work or you go to school and you find yourself in a state where, like, nothing feels real, you know what dissociation is? I, I guarantee you've probably, all of you have probably dissociated at least once in your life. The idea of zoning out is a form of dissociation. It's just kind of, you're so detached from whatever's going on around you that you just kind of, just kind of like fade or just kind of go somewhere else. I think technically daydreaming is a form of dissociation too. Like a means of, not necessarily a means of, but an effect of being so incredibly disillusioned with whatever your current reality is that your brain just decides something else is real. I've had days where my dissociation is zoning out nonstop all day, especially in high school. Good God, that was like half of my high school experience was just zoning out due in no small part to sheer boredom. But my dissociation in college was a combination of uh, depression-induced apathy and... Uh, so there's there's a certain type of dissociation I forget exactly what it's called but it's one where like everything around you feels fake like you're still aware of what's going on and everything is clearly there and everything is still happening and you know this is all true but nothing seems real I had I have a very distinct memory give me just a second I need to drink some water my voice is getting a little croaky Ugh. 
croaky voice is partially from the talking and partially from the getting over sickness. But um, there's one particular memory I have. When I was in college, I had a few extremely depressive episodes. Like, there was one where um, I actually came within literal inches of of killing myself and that was not that was not a pleasant day nor were the following two days but there was one instance in particular where i was feeling incredibly um like god how do you even describe that i wrote a really long blog post where i just kind of like tried to reason through and philosophize with the idea of whether or not life is worth living Given my history with depression, um, that was very alarming to some people, and uh, I got a lot of a lot of worried calls, a lot of worried messages. Some friends showing up at my door, trying to make sure I'm okay. A friend actually taking days off from his job to come to me for a solid three days just to make sure that I would be okay. Right? God, I appreciate Marcus a lot. Anyway. For those of you who have been around long enough, does Aggie ring a bell? <laughs> That's him. But um, the the day that he arrived, the first thing he made me do was go straight to see my counselor, my uh, like sort of student therapist, I guess. I don't know. The school offered free free counseling, right? Free mental, free uh, just free mental health counseling. He made me see her, and then as soon as I was done talking to her and. That was that was the day that she uh, put a word in for me at the uh, the student medical clinic that I should be allowed to have a free bottle of Prozac, which actually changed my life a lot. That little bottle of bottle of psych drugs. But anyway, day after after or the day, the day that she assigned that after I was done with the meeting, I was just kind of walking around the campus with Marcus, just like showing him around, saying this is the life I live. Ain't it great? And I have this immensely distinct memory of looking around while we were walking up a hill and reaching out to touch a bush, and it felt like plastic. And it was weird to me. I know it's a bush. I know it's got some some little like pine things on it. I know it's I know it's green. I know it it smells like vaguely of not vaguely of mint, but vaguely of just like, is the word coniferous? Coniferous tree smell? I know, I knew that, but it felt like plastic. We walked a bit farther up the hill towards, uh, towards the student, the center of the campus, the Compton Union building. Basically a social hub on the school. This was Washington State University, by the way, in case you're curious. And we, we get to, we get to the Cub, Compton Union building, and, uh, we walk through the door and I, reach out to push open the door and I put my hand on cold glass and it felt like plastic and we're walking around the cub and I look around and all of a sudden everything is plastic just everything and for the rest of that day all I can remember is Marcus talking to him and that everything was fake like Truman Show levels fake. It was terrifying. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever felt. That kind of dissociation where everything feels like wrong or incorrect. That's what I've been feeling these last few weeks <laughs> since I started working full time at my job. I have been so tired nonstop. I'm not really like, I mean, I still. I still have depression that never went anywhere but i'm managing it a lot better these days it's just that because this job is so exhausting all the time and i'm tired non-stop 24 7 regardless of what i do i can't stop dissociating and everything feels like fake time moves faster even when it shouldn't because it isn't real like today the entirety of today other than waking up and calling out sick, everything past that, everything felt fake. Driving to that Denny's felt fake. Sitting in that Denny's felt pretty fake. I, this, it's just so weird to me. 
it, it really is. Dissociation as a concept is something that I'm not a fan of. I mean, I experience dissociation all the time regardless of what I'm doing just because of the whole the whole gender thing, the whole gender issues thing that I deal with. Like, by default, because my body grows hair on its face, I'm sort of dissociating a little bit because, you know, I don't look the way I feel, and there's not much I can do to change that right now, which is fine. I accept that to be what it is. It's reality. For now, at least. But... It's just, like, I get wrapped up in so many levels of this non-reality realityness. It becomes easy to forget what is and isn't. I, it, I'm not even sure exactly what it is I need to feel like things are real. Like... Since I moved to Seattle, the instances, the occurrences I have where I distinctly remember things felt genuine were at Smash tournaments and at that, that game night thing I mentioned that I went to last night. That kind of thing. Times where I'm interacting with people not because either of us wants anything out of the interaction but because we want to interact with each other. I don't get that enough here. If I got that at work, I, I would probably feel a lot better every day and I wouldn't be in this weird, incorrect state nonstop, but I, I can't get that at work because by definition, when I'm at work, I'm talking about my job. <laughs> I'm talking about there's, there's always something that needs to be gained from those conversations I have, those interactions I have with people there, regardless of who they are. I guess whom they are is correct there. What on earth is that noise? It's like the sound of something... It sounded like a whole bunch of drops of rain just fell at once, but it's not raining? Maybe it was a squirrel. I bet it was a squirrel. Anyway, I've been I've been talking for 37 and a half minutes. I should probably stop. I'm sorry if this feels like I'm wasting your time. I just had a bunch of things I wanted to say. Um, I guess to wrap up this video, like I said almost at the very beginning, if you have any suggestions for like music I could make for a scene or a setting or or a feeling or a person or anything like that, Please give me some inspiration. I need it. Um, and if anyone happens to be interested, if you've watched this far and you remember what I said, if you happen to be interested in maybe commissioning me to make music, let me know. I can try and work that out. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking now because it's 1 o'clock in the morning and I need to get some bed. I need to get some bed, yes. <laughs> if anything has indicated that I need to get to sleep, it's the fact that I need to get some bed. Don't. That's not a euphemism, I swear. Okay. I'm done. Uh, have a good one. Or something. I guess.